Three days after the Norfolk Southern train derailed here in East Palestine, Ohio, officials made the decision to burn five tank cars, releasing 116,000 gallons of toxic vinyl chloride into the air. At the time, a local hazmat expert said this. We basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. And since, residents have become sick. Some have fled their homes. Did the EPA sign off on burning five tankers of vinyl chloride that Monday? Well, EPA didn't sign off on anything, even if it was one tanker. Mark Derno is the US EPA official in charge here. We were consulted for health and safety purposes to be able to, uh, they want to know whether or not we can set up our, an air monitoring system to be able to uh, adequately address um, uh, community safety issues. Yes, we were, we were part of uh, the overall decision, but we were not a signatory to the, uh, uh, the actual incident. So I just want to be clear, the decision to burn the five tankers of vinyl chloride the US EPA was involved in that decision. Only as it pertains to air monitoring. At any point during that process did the US EPA say, hey guys, this might not be a good idea to burn five tankers full of vinyl chloride over this town? Not that I'm aware of. It, when, when you're dealing with uh, emergencies like this and you have to make decisions on a, on a very critical pathway, I, I, don't, I don't see where another decision was possible. Former EPA Administrator Judith Enk is critical of the EPA's response. I think that was a mistake. I think that decision will be a major factor in the lives of many communities in Pennsylvania and Ohio, not just East Palestine. Two days after the burn, the EPA gave residents the all clear to come back. The air monitoring uh, had gotten stabilized to a point where we didn't see uh, contaminants of concern at levels of concern in the air. And based on all of that data and the fact that the particulate counts in the air had come down to an acceptable level, uh, we knew there was not an acute threat to the, for the public to come back and access their homes. Residents we met with in May disagree. Two days after the controlled burn, the EPA said it's safe, come on back. Was that the right decision? No. 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 How many people here feel that They've experienced symptoms or sickness related to the train derailment and the, and the controlled burn. Wow, that's like every, every hand. Some, like Linda Murphy, say their medical tests found markers for vinyl chloride in their system. That whole town is a chemical cocktail, and we're all lab rats. You're just looking at some of the ones who have been marked. We don't know if they have vinyl chloride in their system. We know that they may have been exposed to vinyl chloride early on, but all the monitoring that we've done to date uh, from, uh, from the time that evacuation was lifted has not shown any sustained vinyl chloride uh, exposures in the community. We know that uh, there are residents that are dealing with health issues. Uh, the, the question is, what are those health issues from? We don't know if uh, there is uh, a, another potential source of vinyl chloride. I can't see an exposure pathway. Um, you know, the soils... Uh, Hold on. Yeah. You can't see an exposure pathway. I the, the five tankers of vinyl chloride were burned here. That's right. And so if people are finding the metabolite, mm -hmm. you know, in their system for mm -hmm. vinyl chloride, it's not a stretch to say that the vinyl well, chloride that was in those tankers might have ended up in their systems. Oh, there's a potential they were exposed. I'm not saying that. I'm saying right now we don't see an a, a exposure pathway. Why do you think people are getting sick here? I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a health uh, professional. Independent testing expert Scott Smith has found dioxins, the most carcinogenic compounds on the planet, in the soil, the water, and in people's air filters. His latest results from three residents who have reported health symptoms show dioxin levels in their furnace filters at least 2,000% higher than a control sample in a neighboring town not affected by the toxic plume. Other than taking a biopsy of people's lungs, the next best thing to see what they've potentially been inhaling that could be causing their medical issues are the furnace filters. His work should encourage the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency now to go and grab some other filters and do similar testing and analysis. But the EPA says they will not test furnace filters here. I think that's a mistake. Why won't the EPA do this? Because every piece of data that we collect has to have a data, what we call a data quality objective. And that objective 
tells us what we're going to do with the result. If we go out and collect a, a furnace filter uh, sample and we don't have any comparative values uh, to measure that against, then all we have is a piece of data that we can't use. In the EPA's opinion, is East Palestine and these surrounding communities, is it safe here for residents? I don't see any exposure potential from the derailment site based on the hundreds of thousands of monitoring points that we have. Um, is it safe? Well, don't go into the creek. Uh, there is uh, contaminated sediments in Sulphur Run, right? It's not safe um, to, to be waiting in, the, in contaminated sediments. Um, however, uh, the ambient air quality in East Palestine and surrounding communities, we don't see any contaminants of concern. So uh, we don't have any concerns uh, with, uh, uh, with people uh, being in these communities. Will the EPA recommend to the CDC long-term health monitoring for residents? To be determined. Right now, we're bringing some of our health experts into the fold. We're going to look for their guidance on, uh, to answer that question. What is the EPA doing with federal agencies to make sure this doesn't happen again? That's uh, an also a uh, stay tuned answer because um, you know, we we're, we're in the cleanup mode right now. We haven't gotten to the lessons learned part of this. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.